Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Have you ever felt like it's so hard to be visible in your business because you have to put yourself out there and you have to be seen, but you have all these old stories about what you look like and what people will think of you. If you have ever struggled with this and if it's what keeps you from being visible, today's topic of conversation is for you. I want to introduce you to my friend and client, Teddy Hicks. Teddy is all about being done with women hating their bodies and hating themselves. She is a food and body love coach. She has so many healing modalities. She has helped me in my own life become more visible and accept myself for who I am, just exactly where I am, and overcome so many hateful thoughts about myself. So Teddy, thank you so much for being here today. And I'm so excited for what you're about to share. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> oh, I want to get started by tell, having you introduce yourself and tell us, you know, who you help, what you do. Tell us a little bit about your audience and, and the problems that they have. Okay. So I work primarily with business women to help them stop battling food, stop hating their bodies so that they can feel more confident and be more visible and make more money. Mm-hmm. And it really came from a very Um, personal place with me. That's really the story of my life as well. I got to a point, well, I entered treatment for binge eating disorder because my food, my eating was totally out of control and I was a mess. And along the way of like learning to be peaceful with food and accept myself as I am, I got really pissed off at how much time I had wasted and how many opportunities I had missed in my financial and professional life, because I didn't feel good about myself. I mean, there was a very clear correlation for me between shame about my body, all of this preoccupation and distraction with food and dieting and all that stuff, and literally not doing the things that I wanted to do with my life. And it really made me mad. And I, you know, that was a big turning point for me. And I just realized that's what I wanted to make my career about is helping other women escape that prison of this diet culture BS that we are all conditioned to believe from the you know moment we're born and just learn to live your life and do your best and make lots of money and be successful as you are right now. Right so, now, without having to change anything. Exactly, right. It feels so impossible when you say it like that. Like, oh, just love yourself how you are. Right. You don't have to change anything. It feels like, shit, if I could do that, I would have done right. that, Right. Right. I think the turning point for a lot of women who come to me and and most of my clients are like 30s to 40s or 50s and they're at a point in their life where they're like, "Okay, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know how to do this, but I know I cannot do what I've been doing anymore. I yeah. cannot continue hating myself. I cannot continue staying stuck." You know, you get to a point in life where you look around and go, "Is this how I want things to be? Is this, you know, is this, this the life it? that I thought I was going to have?" Yeah. And what's holding me back from that? And I'm, and you know, most of my clients are just so sick of this struggle and not getting anywhere. It's like it's just like spinning your wheels in mud, you know. And yeah, finally realizing, you know, you've got to do something else. And one of the things that I am so passionate about and love to do is like identifying exactly what it is. Like, what are the beliefs that are holding you back? Where did they come from? And then giving you tools to work through them. It's not just like a a theoretical process where we're just going to talk about stuff and, and, you know, figure it out. Like we, I, I have a process that I walk people through and it's, incredible because it works, you know, and you can see, I mean, you've experienced this yourself. You can Mm -hmm. see the, the arc of transformation, you know, where you come and you think there's no way I could accept myself. And I felt that way too. that's, That's my story. Absolutely. And then I'm at a point in my life now where I look around and I go, Oh my God, I'm literally doing what I want to do. And I look in the mirror every day and go, damn girl, you look good. And that's not (laughs) fake. It's not, it's not a facade. You know, that's really how I feel right? because I learned how to figure it out. I learned how to do the work. So Well, let's talk about the problems that your specific audience and ideal clients are struggling with. What exactly is is going on with them? What are they not doing or doing? It was shocking to me 
actually to realize how many of these brilliant, really competent, successful women who, you know, on the surface appear to have their lives really well (laughs) orchestrated and appear to be doing well, have this kind of deep, dark, shameful secret around food and their bodies. You know, it's like the hiding. I mean, I know that you, you can relate to this too. It's like the hiding in the kitchen, stuffing pizza in your face when, you know, the next morning you're in a business meeting acting like your, you know, your, your life is put together, you know, yeah. I mean, it ends up yeah. being this deep, dark secret and and women don't realize that we are all doing this. I mean, this, it's so common. So I think there's kind of this split, this dichotomy between how people see them and what's really going on behind the scenes, you know, and, and being able to kind of pull that into the light and go, you know, this isn't, this isn't just you. There's nothing wrong with you. This is diet culture. This is what it makes us do. It makes us be crazy around food and it makes us hate ourselves. And you don't have to live like that. You know, this is, yeah. there's a way to get out of it. So once they realize that they're not alone and they realize that like what they're doing is really problematic, not just because it sucks or they're not the size they want to be, but like, it's keeping them from being seen. It's keeping them from making more money. It's keeping them from growing and, and having the greatness that they want. So once they realize that, what's the very first thing that you, as the, the expert in tackling this have to do with them? This is not something that anybody wants to hear. This is not, this is not a selling point, but it really is being able to accept, at least just accept the possibility that you can do anything that you want to do in your life right now. You know, so many of us are trapped in that, in that feeling of needing to change our external circumstances before we can be happy. Like, okay, well, I, I can be successful. I can make the money I want to make. I can show up on video. I can do all these things after I change my body, after I lose weight, after I feel better about myself. So, you know, the, the multifaceted lie is first of all, that we can't be happy the way we are right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And that we have control over the way our bodies look, which is Mm -hmm. also something that we have to really wrap our heads around because that is very hard to let go of. It's very hard to let go of. And it, and we don't, a lot of people don't believe it because right. diet culture is so pervasive. You know, we really believe we can control our bodies if we try hard enough, if we have enough willpower. And that that's just not true. The facts don't at all support that, you know? And so yeah. I work a lot with women, just like showing them how that's not possible, giving them some information about that, but also showing them being and being a model for being able to just love yourself exactly like you are and move into a place in your life where you really feel happy and successful without needing to change this, you know, this meat suit. I feel (laughs) the meat suit. I feel (laughs) that a lot of women use that first story, which is I have the ability to change my body if I just worked hard enough, if I ate the right things, if I wasn't such a screw up, if I wasn't, if I, if I wasn't such a loser, if I didn't, if I had more willpower, like that's the first story. Right. And then you and I know that's not true. Like sometimes you're just, you're just a size, like I'm a size 14 and that's like where my body is comfortable. If I starved myself, I could probably get back down to a size 10, but like, it would really, really, really take a lot of work for me. Right. And so that's the first part, but I feel, and, and, I'm curious what your your point of view is on this. I feel like a lot of women stay there because you can hide there for your whole life. You can hide with, well, I'm not going to, I know that I need to do video to be more visible and grow my audience and make more money, but I really can't do that until I lose 15 or 20 pounds or 40 pounds or hundred pounds or whatever. And because you and I know that like losing the 15, 20, 35, 50 pounds is damn near impossible for mm-hmm. most people that they just stay stuck with that belief forever and they never get anywhere. Yeah. It is. It's, it's a way to keep yourself safe. I mean, it really is. Dieting is such a great distraction. It's such a great excuse. I can't do this stuff because of the way I look. And I, and that was a big story for me too. I mean, I remember that very clearly thinking, Oh, well that all has to come later. I have to put, I have to push all that back because I've got to deal with this shit first, you know, and it's, it's just not the way it works. And I think there, there is a point where, a lot of women just go, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm sorry. I'm not willing to sacrifice my freedom and my happiness for this dream. Elusive dream. Right. And I mean, we've all done it. We've all died it a million times and lost the weight and gained it back and gained back even more than we lost. I mean, that's such a common cycle, you know, and eventually we're all going to go, oh yeah, it doesn't work. (laughs) Right. Right. Like this, this myth is not true. 
Right. So by the time somebody actually realizes that this is uh, some bullshit they're not willing to deal with anymore and they find you, what, where are they mentally that makes them finally hire you? It's usually exhaustion. Okay. You know, I really think it's usually a point of just feeling like I don't, I, I give up. I'm just tell me what I'm supposed to do. Tell me. Cause how all I of this isn't happy. working. Right. This isn't working. And I'm no longer willing to sacrifice my mental health, my peace of mind for this maybe 10 pounds lighter body that, you know, is miserable for me to maintain. Like, yeah. you know, we want, we want to be happy. That's really what it's all about. Everybody just wants to be happy and enjoy their lives. And at some point you make the connection or I can help you make the connection between this, this obsession with changing the way you look and you know, not being happy in your life that it causes right. so much anxiety, so much fear, so much shame. And you, you don't have to do it. You know, that's, it's like, I'm giving you a permission slip. You don't have to do that anymore. You can love yourself right now. And I can show you how, and I you can know, show you how that's the thing. Like, because yeah. we've been hearing, I think there's been a shift in, especially like, it depends on who you follow or what, what you block on your socials and whatever mm -hmm. you take in, but there's definitely been a shift to, you know, health at every size, like mm -hmm. everybody is beautiful. Like, so I have seen a shift, but you can put that messaging out there, but until you internalize it and understand how to yeah. love yourself, wherever you are, meet yourself, wherever you are and stop beating the shit out of yourself. Like, it's just a, it's just another philosophy right. or idea yeah. that you're just like, oh, that sounds great. I have no idea how to do it. It's like oh, yeah. when people come to me to start a business or grow a business, they're like, oh yeah, I want to grow my business, but I have no idea how to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, it sounds great, but, but, but we all need help with the actual doing of right. the thing. Yeah. And that, you know, that's, uh, it's not, it's not philosophical for me. Like I, I am a Virgo. I'm very like, I want a pattern and a tools and a plan to do it. And so I spent years in therapy talking and talking and talking and talking. And finally I was like, this was great. And it helped me so much. And I understand so much more about myself, but I need a plan. I need, where do I go from here? Like, what am I doing now? Okay. That's I got right. all this awareness, but I still hate myself and I still want to lose weight. Exactly. So, you know, I worked really hard and that's why I, I did all the things like the hypnotherapy and the Reiki and the tapping. And I have all these certifications because I wanted to have tools in place that actually changed people. Yeah. And it, I mean, it really, there is like a way to walk through it. It's not just like, we're going to sit down and talk more about how you hate yourself and <laughs> right. hopefully that'll go away. You know, like we're going to doesn't it. work like that. Yeah. Yeah. You've got so many tools and that's one of the things I really wanted to have you on because you've got so many tools to help people heal from these, these stories they've been carrying around that have wounded them so much. Like people right. are walking around with these sores all over them mm -hmm. almost. And you, yeah are so good. And one of the most powerful things, you, so I worked with Teddy on this topic because I was so tired of telling myself I couldn't grow my business. Um, I was tired of waking up every day. Like, and my first thought was always, you're so fat. You're so gross. What are you going to wear today? How are you going to hide today? Mm -hmm. And I was so tired. And by the time I met you, I was like, I think I'm your ideal client and I'd like to work with you. And one of the very first things you had me do was tell my food story. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that we all have food stories mm -hmm. and some of us are still carrying those around from a long time ago, but even just to talk about what food was like as a child and then what food was like in my twenties and my thirties and like what my relationship with was with food. That was like, uh, that was something that was so freeing to me. And when yeah. you let me tell my food story without judgment or trying to fix me, right it freed me to talk more. And then to only then was I ready to take the healing and mm -hmm. the, and use your program to reprogram my brain about this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really what it's about for me. Like it, you, you are holding all of these stories from your past, like you said, in your subconscious, and it's not always just about food. I mean, of course, there's so much other stuff that comes up about shame and, you know, family patterns and stuff, but that's all in there and that's dictating your behavior and your feelings in the world. Right. And so I, you can literally on a consistent, in a consistent way, reprogram those ideas so that you feel differently. And, and I hear this so much. You, I think you said this to me, but I've had so many clients say this to me too. It's like, I just feel different. I didn't work hard. I didn't have to strain and struggle and do a bunch of stuff. It was like, I just did the things that you said to do. It took a few minutes, three times a week. And 
I feel differently. Like I had a client recently who just the idea of showing up on video for her business, absolutely not. Like just can't do it. That was one of her very, very strong subconscious beliefs. A couple of weeks we worked together. She She's in the food and body love coaching program. She did the meditations and the tapping and, you know, watched the videos. And I talked to her, like we had a follow-up call a few weeks later and she's like, yeah, no big deal. Like I'm, I'm doing videos now. I'm totally fine. And it's just so fun to watch it happen. Cause I know, you know, I know it works. It's what I did for myself. It's what I did for you. You know what you yes. did for yourself. It's, yes. So talk about, so, so she's showing up now on video. Mm-hmm. How has this doing this work for yourself helped your business? What did it shift? I think showing up publicly and really not, I, I, I had a very strong story that I needed to curate my message so that I didn't offend anyone, so that I wasn't, so that I fit in some mold of, you know, this acceptable kind of coach and intuitive eating counselor. And this process for me has just freed me to really speak from my heart and and do things in a way that feels authentic and aligned with who I am and the things that I find are important. And it's it's so amazing. I mean, of course, I know that you know this, but when you do that, when you really do what feels right to you, even if it doesn't like make sense or a coach didn't tell you to do it, or it's not part of a plan, you, uh, you attract people who want to hear your message. You, you automatically are just kind of like a magnet for perfectly aligned clients who love you and appreciate you and want to pay you. And it's, it's just easy, you know? And so yes, for me showing up, showing up on video and doing things online. That was a big part of it. I remember the first video I made for my business, like years ago, I, it took me like three hours to prepare. And I'm like, <laughs> did my hair a thousand times. And I'm like, you know, sitting stock still in front of the camera. And it was just this awful, like stiff, you know, and now it's like, I don't, I'll just hit go on live and do a live real quick. If I just have a thought through, through my head and it's just freeing to be able to really be who you are. And people want to hear from you, your authentic self. They don't want this, this polished, Curated, like, yes. any version of you, you know? Right. Right. The, oh, I'm so proud of you. I'm so <laughs> proud of all the you. work you did. What else do you think is important for women entrepreneurs to know about this link between their success entrepreneurially and all of the shit they're carrying around in their head about their, their bodies and the way that they look? I think a lot of women are stuck thinking first of all, I'm not good enough to do this. Like, see how I'm not as successful as all these other people. That means I don't know something. I need another certification. I need, I need help. I need, you know, I need all this support, but really 99% of the time, it's just some limiting belief that you're walking around with. And when you can turn your focus back inside and go, okay, how am I holding myself back? Right. What is it in me? Not that it's your fault, but just being able to figure out what's what's the fear, what's the belief that's telling you you can't do it because you're not, there's plenty of people making lots of money that aren't smarter than you or better than you in any or way. Or thinner than you. Right, or thinner than you, exactly, right. And it's it's not about being right in order to be successful. It's about being more yourself, right? Like the more you, you can be and the more you yeah. can love yourself and figure out why you don't have the confidence to step out there and just be unapologetically yourself. That's the real work. You know, it's not about changing things as much as it is about just like healing yourself, you know, mm-hmm. with these old stories. A hundred percent. I always say to my clients, cause when they, when they want, when they start, especially at the beginning and then when they're going deeper into their business, they're honing in on their audience. I always mm-hmm. want my clients to hone in who exactly are you speaking to? And you're really doing that. But a lot of clients are still trying to speak to everybody because mm-hmm. they want to serve everybody, which is, which is baloney. We can't serve yes. everybody. And I watch other people's messaging. There's like a couple of people out there who are way more raw and mm-hmm. divisive than I would ever be. They're just not my personality. And then there's, mm-hmm. you know, people who are just nicer than me and, and more <laughs> pleasant than me. And like, <laughs> it's just not my personality. Right. So right. The, the other day, a client said to me, the reason I fell in love with you and wanted to work with you is because you are so unapologetically Mm -hmm. yourself. And I have only come more and more and more into that after doing the work with you. And I actually really haven't shared with my audience, my journey of recovering Mm -hmm. from an eating disorder and all of the work I've done. So this is really the first time I'm talking about it, but here I am talking about this super vulnerable thing, not as a hot mess, but as like somebody who I know there are people in my audience who struggle with this too. And so 
that I want to attract more of those people. And that's exactly what you're saying. Like the more you kind of meet yourself where you are and are Mm -hmm. okay with that, the more like-minded people you're going to attract. Exactly. Yeah. And, and especially in, in this kind of business, like you and you and me both have, we're supporting other women, right. To, to help themselves. And so the more of a strong model that we can be, you know, people come to you because they're like, Oh, I like what she's got going on. I want to be like her. Right. So it behooves us to be more confident and to really show up and be authentic so that we can show other people how to do that too. You know? Yeah. Because we know that these women who are still hiding because of whatever bullshit stories are in their head, we know how much they have to bring to the world. Like we okay. know how helpful they can be. And that when more women are making more money, this world is a better place. It's a better place for everybody. We all yeah. want women to make more money and have more power and have their voice. And it's really hard if every day you wake up and the first thing you're thinking is I'm so hideous. How and then you spend... And then you spend the whole day thinking, how am I going to change myself? And you, I I always say, I've been saying more recently, if beating the shit out of yourself worked as a strategy, (laughs) we would all be bajillionaires and and size twos or double zeros, right? Or whatever, like your ideal is, we would all be there because we've been beating the shit out of ourselves. It's not a, it's not a tactic that works. Yes. A hundred percent. Your program. And I really want to encourage people to check out Teddy's program because it takes people in, in a very realistic way, like there's no bullshit here. There's not like, it's not a one size fits all thing either. She really mm-hmm. meets you where you are. And like, and it's a group, pro- it's a group program still, right? Like, yeah. you, do you do any work with what people one-on-one these days? I do. I have private coaching too, but that's not the main focus of my business is yeah. the, is the email coaching program. I know but you I, love I, your program. Thank you so much. I, I will work with people one-on-one if they, you know, if they really want to, but that's not, I don't promote that a lot. So. Yeah. And in yeah. your program, the, the thing is we, we're calling it a program because really what we're doing is reprogramming our brains mm-hmm. from all the programming that's happened to us since we were born and started recording everything that was going on around us. Yeah, exactly. So it's and really it's, reprogramming. Yeah. The, and the structure of it, um, which I love is, is for us. I mean, it's for, it's for a professional busy person who is not going to like put their life on hold to yeah. go into intensive therapy and do this work, you know, and let it take over their life. It's, it's a couple minutes. You get the email right in your inbox. It's super easy to just yes. do the thing right then and not, you know, not have to like sit for hours and journal or, you know, whatever right. you think yes. it's going to take, you know, and it's just like little bits of change consistently over like a long period of time. And I, I just find it so peaceful and relaxing. It's like such a nice, calm and comforting way to do it. You know, you can really do it anywhere at any time. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. I I wanted to tell you this. I woke up last week and I went into my closet room thing and I was like, Oh, I have, I have clothes that I like now. I have clothes that Mm -hmm. fit me. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm a size 14 and I don't wake up every morning going, I can't wait to get back to my size tens. And I, I I woke up feeling such peace and I know that kind of sounds bullshitty, but like, I don't bullshit my audience. I really woke up and just felt like, yep, this is how I look. And I have a successful business and I have a family that loves me and I have friends that love me. Like there's nothing that changed in my life, except it got for the better when I started to accept myself where I was. Exactly. And it was such a subtle aha for me that Mm -hmm. I thought that. And I wanted to share it with you today because that was only because of the work that we did. If I hadn't met you and found you, I would still be beating the shit out of myself, starving myself, working out two to three times a day, shaming myself all the time. Mm -hmm. But now like I'm, I'm pretty comfortable. And when I exercise, it's because, oh, my hips hurt or my, you know, like I, my back hurts. Like it's because I, my body needs it because I'm moving into my fifties, right? right? It's not because I'm beating the shit out of myself and that freedom frees me up to be so much more present in my business. Like exactly. my business crossed six figures this year. That's so exciting because I had the freedom to do it. Right. I had like the mental space and you and I have had the conversation and you kind of alluded to this at the beginning. We had the conversation many times on our calls where we were like, how much more could we have accomplished in our lives if we weren't spending all this mental energy wondering, is it okay to be a size 10? What I if know. I move up to a size 12? What if I was a size, eight? like all of this bullshit? I know. I know. It's, I just said to my husband the other day, what if I hadn't spent the last 20 years trying to lose weight? What if that had not crossed my mind? What could I, ha- I mean, I could be a millionaire by now. You know, it's right. just like, it's like you get right. to a point, you just get so mad about it, you know, so sick 
of worrying about this shit. And, and how, I mean, I can, I have a video that my daughter taped when she was like five or six and she was so cute. And she had a, like a camera and she was walking around the house, just like doing a little like vlog thing. Uh And she walked up to me and she was taping me. And in the scene, I'm sitting at the counter in her house and I've got a notebook in front of me and I have just gotten back from a run. I'm like covered in sweat. And she's trying to talk to me. She's like, mom, you know, blah, 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 whatever. And I, I was like furiously writing in this notebook and then like glancing over at her and glancing it over at her, like clearly annoyed. I hate watching it. It like breaks my heart, but I know I remember what I was doing during that video. I was writing down what I was going to eat that day and counting up the calories to see if how low I could keep my, my yeah. calorie count. And it just, it's just like the shame washes over me of how much time and energy I've wasted, how many connections with other people I've missed, I've damaged, you know, and how, how much less money I've made because <laughs> I, was I know spending my time doing right. that stupid shit, you know? Right. So it's important um, work. I love that story. I've never heard that story before from yeah. you. Yeah. It, it's really sad. So I've, I've written a blog post about it. It just, it breaks my heart, but it's, it's, it's such a good metaphor example. for everything. Yes. Yes. It's like, Oh my God. Yeah. And again, we're not talking about not being healthy or making unhealthy choices. We're talking about meeting yourself where you are so that you can like yourself right now so that you can be visible and grow your business. That's, that's the point of all of this, right? It's it's self-care coming from a place of love, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's stopping the hating yourself, shaming yourself, beating yourself up. And it's going, you know what? I love myself and I want to take excellent care of myself. I want to figure out how to eat in a way that actually supports my body. I want to feel good every day so that I can go out into the world and do my best. Yeah, You know, this is, it's a really about actual care rather than just losing weight, losing weight, losing yeah. weight, losing weight, yeah. you know? Yeah. So if you are a woman listening to this or watching this, and you're thinking, I have an impact that I want to make in the world. I have a program I want to start. I have a business. I want to, I want to heal people. I want to help people. And you have been holding yourself back. This is something maybe you should listen to two or three times because I'll tell you, this is not a message that if you're struggling with this, I know you don't hear this message just once and you're just like, oh, let me call Teddy. Like I, we both know how much angst and time and, and kindness to yourself it takes yeah. to start this work. But yeah. I'm telling you, when you meet yourself where you are and you just get on video and you just show up for your clients and you just start marketing yourself, mm-hmm. your business will grow. Like it can't help it grow. And you're the perfect person to talk about this, Teddy, because you struggled with this too. And you're just like, we we talked about how to put your stuff out there, put your stuff out there. And you had to be seen in order to do that. And you have Absolutely. done a beautiful job. So if you, you are not... I'm going to ask you to follow Teddy on the socials because she's very active and she has so much goodness to share just in her um, free content. So yeah. Teddy, tell us how we can follow you on the socials. I'm most active on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, but I'm, you know, to be honest, I feel like an old lady saying this, but I really don't know how to use Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so um, mostly Facebook, facebook.com slash Teddy Hicks. And um, my website is foodandbodylove.com. And I've got a lot, there's a lot of blog posts on there to read, like a lot of free stuff to read and a lot of freebies too, to download, you know, like how to stop hating exercise and how to love your body right now. And so just like some helpful little tips that you can get for free right now. And I also send out a daily affirmation to my mailing list um, every morning, as you know, or every weekday. And so they're not always specifically about body image and eating, but it's always about how to love yourself more, how to have better relationships, how to be motivated to accomplish your goals. So I get a lot of really positive feedback about those too. Yeah, those so, are great. I love those. I, I've, I think I've told you, I have like three people who come into my email every day because I'm ruthless with mm-hmm. my email. I always say, yeah. and you are one of those three up there Thank with you. Seth Godin and I'm Teddy Hicks. <laughs> 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 um, so if you are interested in Teddy's work, go to foodandbodylove.com. The yep. A-N-D is spelled yep. out. And she's got a freebie that she's giving away to us too. It's foodandbodylove.com forward slash five ways to feel better about your body. And you just write that all out. And I will put that in the show notes. Actually, you can just find it in the description. The link will be there for you, but I highly recommend connecting with Teddy and connect with yourself because if you want more visibility in your business, it's all about meeting yourself where you are and stop worrying about trying to be everything for everybody because it's impossible. It's totally impossible. You don't have to be vanilla and try to please. I don't even like vanilla, frankly. 
Hi, I, I like chocolate chip. I, know. <laughs> I like mint chocolate chip. I know. So and if it, you're vanilla, you're not even meeting everybody's needs. And it's not fun. It's not fun to try to please everyone oh. and be be everything to everyone. It is yeah. fun to show up and say whatever you feel like talking about that day and let it come from a place of of realness. You know, yes. that's it makes your business just so much more fun so much and better. enjoyable. Yeah. And yeah. more successful. You're going to make more money if you do that. A hundred percent. Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Thank you, Teddy, for being here and for sharing all this goodness with us. Thank you. Um, I can't rave about you any more than like, I, I just hope people understand the, that you have changed my life and I want you to know that. And so thank you for, thank you for showing thank up you. for me too. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, everybody, thank you for tuning in and listening. I hope you got something out of it. And I would just love for you to take one baby step and maybe that's to follow Teddy or to go find her downloads. Her her stuff is really super digestible. So she knows how to chunk it up so that you can digest it. And I think that's funny that I'm using the word digest when we're talking about food and body love. Um, You always also say bite-sized chunks. I do always say that. I always say that. So she does that perfectly. So please give Teddy a follow and we'll see you next week talking more about visibility. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app and tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go. I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.